Patrick Cristiano, I'm coming to you from the legendary Sardis for the 69th annual Outer Critics Circle Awards. We'll be talking to some of the winners very shortly. Yeah. I'm with the legendary Bob Mackey, who at the, at the legendary Sardis, he's the winner of Outstanding Costume Design for the Share Show. It was extraordinary. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And what did you have to do differently for the theater? Well, the theater, I mean, it, it's really the same, the same problem. You know, I always thought, well, if you sit in the audience, it's like watching a, a 12-inch TV in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> now, was there any, any new challenges doing costumes for Stephanie as opposed to Cher? Well, no, but everybody, you know, I have three shares and they all have beautiful figures, but they're all different. So you, one has to kind of try to push them into that, that category. But Cher herself it doesn't have exactly the figure she had in 1970. I'm with Tina Fey, who is outstanding um, musical last year yes. and is going to be a presenter this year. Yes. So uh, how does it feel having all these girls lined up to see your show a year later? I love it. It feels great. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, so it's so nice to have the show, which is this living thing. And, uh, you know, unlike a TV show or a movie, I, I love dropping in. Uh, stop by. You might see me there. It, it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so fun. The fact that the... The movie has lived on this long and that the, sh the show takes it deeper and then we're getting ready to launch the tour in the fall, the national tour. So, yeah, it's been really, really thrilling and gratifying. I think back, you know, 17 years ago when I was writing the screenplay on Fire Island and now it's like, it's a whole brand. <laughs> How are you? I'm with Micro Biblia, who is outstanding solo performance. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Congratulations. <you>? Thanks. <laughs> How does it feel? It's great. I'm very excited. I won I won a late lunch. <laughs> I've never won a late lunch before. My wife Jenny, she wrote the show with me, Jennifer Hope Time. But uh, yeah, usually you go to award shows and uh, you're nervous and then you end up not winning and you have to smile politely. And this one, they just give you lunch. You know, if people don't know the show, basically it's... Uh, the first half of the show is all the reasons why no one should ever have a child. The second half of the show is how I had a child and how I was right about it. And it's exaggerated. I mean, the jokes are exaggerated, but the underlying principle was how I felt. But I'm so glad I did. You know, I'm euphoric at this point. Our daughter's four, and she's doing so great. And, yeah. I'm with the legendary Joel Gray, who is the outstanding director of a musical for... Tell us. Off Broadway. Oh, off, off Broadway. Yes. I, you know, I got an email today, and it said you're going to also be honored by Bay Street this season. That's true. Congratulations on Thank that you. too. Thank you. So, do you get ever get tired of all this attention? No. I'm with Vanula Flanagan from The Ferryman, who was nominated but didn't win Outstanding Featured Actress, but she's here to celebrate her play's victory because it was the outstanding play of the season. Uh, you were wonderful as well, I Thank thought. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's a marvelous play. Yeah, and the it's, shocking it's, ending is great. You know? It's extraordinary. But you, you, you have a, your character is a, almost like a moral part of it. Well, I think she's sort of the sibyl of the piece, you know. She knows what's going to happen, but she doesn't know she knows. You know, it's that's her, her drawback, if you will. But but she knows everything that's going to happen, and particularly at the end when she knows that nothing but disaster can come from these events. And uh, so I, I tend to, you know, be the one, the bearer of bad news. You know, people think that she's Alzheimer's or something. And I don't think that. I think she's just a natural no, time I, traveler. I, I, I know what you mean. I had a moment where I thought that early in the piece. And then as a tra I didn't think she did. I chose it. No, that's not true. And Darcy James. Yeah, what, what are you, are you presenting? No, I'm here uh, just in support of the ferryman. Well, uh, Fanula Flanagan is here. She'll be speaking. I on, spoke with her. She'll be speaking on behalf of the company. Uh, Sam uh, Mendes and Jez Butterworth are unable to be here, who are uh, award winners today. And so I'm here in support of them and uh, just uh, just here cheering on the show. I'm with Robert Horn, who won Outstanding Book of a Musical for Tootsie. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Does this mean anything special? It means every. Listen, as a theater kid growing up in New York, Outer Critics Circle is like, that's one of the pinnacles. That is like the top of the mountain. So absolutely, it's really quite, it's humbling and it's so exciting. I mean, 
I have been riding for 35 years waiting for this moment. It is quite fantastic. I'm with, I'm with David Corns, who's outstanding set design for Beetlejuice, uh, set design of a musical. Congratulations. Is, does this mean anything special? Uh, d- does it mean anything that's not special? Are you kidding? It's, <laughs> so, I mean, with all the awards you get, how do you sort them out? And No, 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 no. You, you, this never gets old. You never count any chickens before they hatch. And this is six years, over six years of design work to get to this place with Beetlejuice and I am uh, so thrilled and honored to be here and the design team one of the things I'm most proud of is that you do not know where the scenery ends and the projection start and the lighting ends and the ca- it's a co- total collab. musical staging and choreography for Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish uh, it was inc- off and done. It was incredible. And so you got to w- work with the legendary Joel Gray. How was that? It was a great experience. Uh, you know, he, he's someone who I admired all these years. And to be in the same room with him, but also to have him make me uh, espresso in his apartment. Uh, and, you know, to be a yin and yang where uh, we got to work very closely together on this wonderful show. Here, How you know, did you do it? Well, you know, part of it's the Yiddish being in the actual language. But the other thing is for me to go to the actual dances that were done at that time and to use that along with jo- uh, with Jerome Robbins uh, because it's about 20% Jerome Robbins the rest of it is me and it's seamless in thinking of, of how they originally danced at that time and and so the audience feels as if they're looking through a keyhole and seeing this unique culture that has its own language its own traditions and maybe foreign to many Warren Carlyle who's outstanding choreography for a musical Kiss Me Kate it was phenomenal oh thank you I had a lot of fun this season I, I can't believe what you did I've never I want to say I've never seen anything like it but it was beyond 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 that's amazing I I had the time of my life and how about those incredible dancers I mean really we should give them a huge shout out because they are so special how they do it you don't give them easy choreography (laughs) I do not I do not but that's my job you know I'm like tasked with taking care of Broadway for a minute so here I am doing my best do you do something to keep them in shape so they can perform it too or do they do that is that part of their homework no it's part of their homework Uh and actually they are very 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 in shape there's a thing called the 12 jump challenge that if you ask any of the dancers on Broadway they know about this kind of kiss me Kate 12 jump challenge so that's something unique to your show? It is indeed. You'll spot those 12 jumps in Too Darn Hot. Did you create it or did they create it? Oh, I did. So where do I find it? I want to know about it. You can find um, Erica Mansfield. Uh-huh. She is the dance captain. If you look for Erica Mansfield, she has a 12 jump challenge going. And I think it's something like hashtag 12 jumps. It's an amazing thing. I'm with Maura Isaacs, one of the lead producers of Hades Town, that was named Outstanding Musical. Congratulations. It's, I was a big fan of it from off-Broadway. How long have you been with it? I've been working on the show for six years. And so you were right from the beginning then? Well, the beginning predates even me, and A.S. Mitchell's been working on it for far longer. But yes, I've certainly been involved since we really did the heavy lifting to, to bring it to the professional stage. What were the challenges of moving it from... New York Theatre Workshop to Broadway and all the changes that you made in the process. It's quite... You know, I was saying to somebody else, Hades Town, like the, the steps we've taken and the path we've taken has sort of revealed itself incrementally as we thought. But basically, we didn't necessarily set out to make a Broadway show. We set out to serve Aeneas's vision and eventually Aeneas and Rachel Chadkin's vision. And that vision started to grow and expand and find an audience. And that audience told us that this was something that really mattered and that moved them and needed to reach a, a wider berth and more people. And so we started to look at how do we make the story bigger? How do we make it more accessible? How do we solve the storytelling questions and the visual questions that will allow it to translate in the best possible way? And we just took all of the steps and all of the time that was required to get it right. Outstanding actor in the musical goes to Santino Fontana. <laughs> Uh, I'm thrilled to be here, and I've been on with so many people here. I've done endless readings of shows that will never happen. Um, we all, yes, we all have the secrets, Stephanie and Lindsay. Um, uh, I'm, um, I really have no words. I've always wanted to be an actor when I realized I couldn't be a baseball player. Uh, I, I know all of you. I thank you. Please enjoy your meal. And uh, that was the end of my speech. Thank you. There is a special word that I'm going to present now. Uh, this afternoon, the Outer Critic Circle is very pleased to honor the York Theatre Company. 
so happy to be here and so happy I don't have a curtain tonight. <sighs> if we could turn back time, we would see all of her excellent performances again, from Liza Minnelli to Reno Sweeney to Trina. Fortunately, we now have the opportunity to see one of the greatest turns of her eclectic career, and it truly lives up to the name of her character, Star. For playing the musical icon Cher in her most legendary, the most incredible woman that I know, that I've grown up with, and that went, we went to the same high school, the amazing uh, Stephanie J. Block wins the Outstanding Leading Actress in a Musical. I did teach Lindsay Batmas across the floor at OSHA High School in Orange County, California. That's right, girl. Kick it up. Kick it up. Um, okay, I wrote something down because usually I speak off the cuff. I've been very emotional and very mushy this entire award season, and I'm very grateful. So please excuse that I've written a few thoughts. Um, there's a line in the Share Show where Star Share says, I've been laughed at my whole life, and I'm okay with it. I must admit, when I was approached to play this role about two and a half years ago, um, I had preconceived notions as to what I thought the role and the show would be, and I kept saying no, because I felt like anyone who might attempt to play Cher would be laughed at, and I wasn't ready to be laughed at. I had played the fool, I had played the comedian, I had planned the jokes, but I'd never prepared my, it's interesting, right? Because we're told to be vulnerable as actors and yet we're also told to have big, thick skin. And I just wasn't there in my life. So I kept saying no. And then after many months, my husband, Sebastian, reminded me of the actor I always prided myself being, which was one who says yes to challenges that scared me. One that never repeated the same part over and over and one who always worked towards surprising people. And the Share Show was that opportunity to do all of that. And I am so grateful I said yes, because um, I feel it's made me a stronger person. I'm about to cry, and that doesn't show a whole lot of stronger person, but I'm telling you, I'm stronger! Um, I feel like I'm a better actor. I feel like it has given me a more present and artistic voice, and I am a better me, because I said yes to play Cher, and who would have ever thought that would have happened? So I want to thank the Outer Critics Circle for this extreme honor, Floaty Suarez and Jeffrey Seller, and I want to thank our director, Jason Moore, for embracing my fears and my doubt, and then turning them into some sort of crazy pop star superpower. I want to thank Rick Ellis for being very receptive and loving. He gave me a voice through Cher, and I am grateful. Uh, thank you to Teal Wicks and Michaela Diamond, who play my Cher sisters. <laughs> my entire Cher Show family and my backstage team, because if you have seen the show, you know my show does not exist without these three people. I have 29 costume changes, and it all happens with Kate Sorg, Mel Hansen, and Kyle Skillen. And my management team, my ride or die, Tim, Don, Mike Gagliardo, and Lisa, who couldn't be here, and my Sebastian, who always encourages me to say yes when I am too frightened to do anything else. Thank you very, very much. We first discovered our next winner through her truly incredible work in the title role of Brandon Jacobs Jenkins' Searing and Octoroon. She went on to play the thoroughly charming Helene in Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, and is now living it up on top each night at Hades Town. For her electrifying tur turn as Persephone, the award for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Musical goes to Amber Gray. <laughs> for all of the Hades Town love this year. Um, I have been part of a political activist community for over a decade now. 
And something I have learned is that activism is filled with disappointment and heartbreak. Um, and I wrote some things down, and I'm just gonna, I just got here and I'm frazzled, I'm just gonna have to look at it. Um, yes, filled with disappointment and heartbreak. And that, uh, <laughs> and that if there is change or payoff, you often do not see that in your own lifetime. Um, the most that I can ask for is to nudge the needle and hope that the next person who tries succeeds. It is about trying, it is about hope, and that is a story that we are telling every night in Hades Town, and I'm so deeply honored to step on that stage and tell it every night. Um, and I'm so grateful that audiences are resonating with it. So thank you, Aeneas, for dreaming up this world, your imagination. Thank you for letting me discover it in the last few years. Chapkin, who hasn't made it here yet, I don't think. Um, thanks for guiding me. And thanks for seeing me before I see myself. Has strutted his way on stage over 46 years on Broadway. From the Wiz to the Full Monty. And guess what? He just keeps getting better. His furthest reach in this direction is currently on view in Hades Town for all to see. He plays the nimble footed narrator Hermes, holding it all together while negotiating the curious tricks and turns that remind folks they're watching a jauntily told tragedy. There is such thing as poetry in motion, and then there's this guy. A veritable festival of elegant, empathetic, even italic movements. The award for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Musical goes to Andre Michel. I'm wearing white today because I feel like a virgin. <laughs> the operative word is steel. <laughs> As you know, Hayden Town was launched to Broadway from the, the National Theatre in London. While I was there, I was able to celebrate my 73rd year on the great <laughs> And I'm celebrating my 50th year as a professional performing artist. And I'm celebrating this marvelous gift from the Art Critics Circle. It comes at a time when I thought I might be considering not retirement but the unconstructed hippie heart that lives inside my body. <laughs> and perhaps look for another path, an experimental thing. Some of you know what I mean. But since working with Chapter the Great, <laughs> the Oracle, Aeneas, <laughs> and the sisterhood of Gail Franzen and Mara Isaacs. I feel like a well-tended flower <laughs> in a well-tended garden. And it is my responsibility to bloom. I'm doing that with the magnificent company of Hades Town all of whom are flowers. I wear white today because I feel I'm being reborn. Howard Beale is a Walter Cronkite caliber newscaster with unsurpassed credibility and a gift for telling it like it is. Howard Beale also loses his mind and becomes aggressively unhinged on live TV. To play Howard Beale eight times a week, an actor must have the gravitas of a president, the emotional fluidity of a lunatic, and the stamina of a porn star. <laughs> that man <laughs> is Brian Cranston. <laughs> if you've ever spent any time with a guy, I mean, that's just who he is. Brian's performance is wowed 
audiences uh, this season. And this production of Network has been called truly the best on-stage dinner currently being served on <laughs> Some people say it's the chili in Oklahoma, but that chili is made from people. <laughs> it's made from people, guys! It's just that dark. performer goes through is that we we are a team we are a company and without the company that we work with uh, I would not be sharing your company tonight so uh, thank you to my cast here in on Broadway and also to the cast who was with us in the London production at the National Theater um, thank you also to the producers at the National um, and on Broadway to be able to make it work and uh, we appreciate it. Um, to Ivo Van Hove, can we get that plate for you? <laughs> I could do more than one thing. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say, I wasn't gonna say much, but uh, Santino yielded the rest of his time to me. So. <laughs> I did want to say one thing. One of the themes of of network is the uh, the addiction to the latest technology that we all have. In my day, and many of our days, it was the television, the tube, as Howard Beale raves about um, in the network. And now our tube is in the palms of our hands. And it never ceases to amaze me that even during the show, how infuriating that can be when you see people either texting for themselves or holding it up and trying to take a quick video or something. And it occurred to me that this is what the issue is, is that these people uh, are living in, a, in reality once removed. They're, they're not living in today and the now. And this has a point, I promise. It all comes back to all the people in this room. We are all related because we're all in this field that we love, and that is the field of live theater. And it is our responsibility to continue to keep it alive and keep it real and present and current. And, and it's no experience that anyone else can have. You can't have it in movies or television or any other performance art except if you're on the street corner. And God bless those people. Uh, but it, it, is, it is imperative that all of us uh, embrace each other as a family. And I thank you to the Outer Critics Circle for keeping that interest alive and stimulating your readers with, with enthralled uh, experiences and reviews of what's happening, not just on Broadway, but all around the country. It is a related uh, uh, field for all of us, and, and I appreciate that. When you've walked out a second story window and lived to tell the tale, it's possible that nothing else could ever seem as scary, except for, of course, fatherhood, for his <laughs> hilarious and heartfelt exploration of what it means to become a parent for the first time, and for the almost impossible achievement of being a cisgender white man talking on a stage and no one's even mad about it. <laughs> Things like these. 
fucking critics! They don't know anything! They are not qualified to do this! I said. such good writers, it's almost better than the play itself. The award for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Play goes to Benjamin Walker. Oh. Uh, I sat down upon arriving next to Howard Miller, a, a critic, and um, he said, I've seen everything you've done, and really I didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> But that's it, isn't it? That's it in a nutshell. Um, he's not wrong. Um, and it's an honor to be honored by you, uh, your artists and craftsmen, and to have your affection, that even for this moment, is really fine. And I thank you. Uh, so completely has our next went winner woven himself into the fabric of Cher's life that he actually became a prominent character in the Cher show. <laughs> Pondering what next to, to bead and stitch for her Cherness. There are, of course, other old pal stars in his stable, and he forever is coming to their Broadway rescue, where these like Debbie, Julia, Liza, no, Julie, Jesus, Liza, <laughs> Alexis, and both Carol's Channing and Burnett. To date, he has nine main stem credits, and now our Outer Critic Circle Award for Outstanding Costume Design, oh my god, Bob Mackey! <laughs> I'm so excited to just to be in this room with all these pictures, for, you know, the sardines look. It's, it's, it's like you see this in the movies, but you don't get to do it if you work in L.A. It's, it's really fabulous. Thank you. And uh, the thing that I, you know, I should be thanking the producer and the directors and, 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 and the writers and everything, but I have to thank the amazing, 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 gorgeous cast that I worked with. Uh, starting with Stephanie J. Block. We oh, have the most beautiful, beautiful human beings ever, physically and mentally, in that cast. And I love them all. And and it's kind of fun to be played on, on the stage. <laughs> you know, that's the weirdest thing. When I went into the first rehearsal, I said, please don't play me like a vicious old queen. <laughs> Anyway, Michael does a good job every night. And I thank you all. They're all so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.